guys, you only see the founder of Edgelota. So in this video, I'm going to go through the key differences between a statistical arbitrage approach to betting and matched betting. I get a lot of questions from members, um, especially new ones, sort of just asking about how we're how we're similar, how we're different. So I thought it'd be really good to just clear up how we are different, uh, and secondly, to just mathematically prove how much um, how the long term expectancy is significantly higher from a statistical arbitrage perspective as opposed to the, the match betting um, approach. So for those not familiar, my background is in quant finance. I've been a professional derivatives trader for, for many years. I worked at Bet365 for five years as a, an in-play trader there, uh, and I've been betting successfully for, for many years. So the purpose of this analysis, uh, match betting, look, it's, it's extremely popular globally. If you, um, if you Google it, the interwebs do light up. There are an estimated over well over 1 million people globally doing this match betting thing. So um, for those not familiar, it'll be interesting for you to learn how that works. Um, but then also, as I mentioned just a moment ago, I'm gonna go through kind of a proof of how the match betting approach is is actually mathematically suboptimal, uh, especially in comparison to a statistical arbitrage approach. So first question, what is match betting? Uh, I mean, if essentially you could, you could break it down and just call it its it's the pure arbitrage of promotions. So then you might go, well, sort of. I've heard that heard that word, a pure arbitrage. But what does that mean exactly? Well, it's when you're locking in a guaranteed profit, uh, the in excess of the risk free rate. That's a bit of a, a financy um, technicality. But just focus on the first part there of just locking in a guaranteed profit. So the match betters will do that through promotions. They'll back, for example, a team or a player or a horse. Uh, with the bookies offering a promotion of maybe it's an early payout, maybe it's a second and third promo uh, insurance with in, in the racing, and then they'll lay it on Betfair typically. So they're trying to just lock in, guarantee themselves maybe 5%, 10% profit on turnover, something like that. But essentially locking in profit is, is what uh, what it's all about. And as I sort of detailed there, there's a, there's a hedging component to it, typically through Betfair, um, but you can actually do that through other bookies as well. But um, so it's locking in profit, it's, it's hedging. So there's this hedging component. So then statistical arbitrage, what's that? Well, that's all about just having focusing on purely expected value. So we don't need to pay away hedging costs or insurance fees out the door. We don't need to pay a bet fair commission. Uh, it's all about long-term expectancy. Uh, so that's, that's what that's all about. And the risk management th for that, you might naturally ask, the question, well, hang on a minute, that sounds a bit risky because you're not sort of hedging on Betfair or through other bookies. Yes, there can be high variance. However, uh, you can totally manage your risk through correct uh, stake sizing. And so th those are the two key, um, uh, well, those are the, the two definitions there. So let's try and bring that out through the through a couple of examples. Um, excuse the slides, a couple of, quite a few words on here, but um, feel free to pause the video if you want to just read it in more detail, but I'll, I'll walk through it. So example one, so let's imagine Betfair is liquid. By liquid, I mean there's a lot of, the, the spread's tight, there's a good amount of um, liquidity in the book in terms of how much size there is there to, to back and lay as well. We'll just use $10 stakes just for the purpose of this example. So imagine a horse is $3 to back with the bookies and $3 to lay on Betfair. It's relatively rare to get that, but because um, the bookies are pretty pretty quick to move, but let's just assume for the purpose of this example that that's the case. So the match betting approach. So how a match better would approach this, and you know there'd typically be a promotion um, on this race. So they'd they'd back the horse with um, with the bookie, and you know just having ten on that. If if the horse does win, you're going to win twenty dollars profit. Then you're going to lay the horse on Betfair at the same price, three dollars, um, which was the assumption here. So you're paying Betfair a little commission there um, if you do win there. So you, if the horse doesn't win, you're gonna you win nine dollars fifty instead of the, the full ten. So what's your net position? If the horse wins, you're going to your PL is zero. If the horse loses, you're just losing fifty cents. And obviously, the hope here is that it runs second or third with this with this approach. Um, but from a just an expectancy perspective and and let's just assume that there is no promotion here um, in this case, just to keep the maths a bit simpler. The expectancy here is negative 33 cents. 
And that basically, the way you work out expectancy is just multiply all the uh, the outcomes that can happen um, with the the P and L that is attributed to each each one. So minus thirty three cents, and that's if you want to work that out in terms of um, percentages, which is always very useful to do if we're backing because our stake was ten dollars. That's a negative three point three percent expectancy. So that's the match betting approach. Then the stat statistical arbitrage approach is similar in that we we still take the, the three dollar value at um with the bookie but we're not bothering with with betfair at all then what's the net position yep we win 20 bucks or we lose 10. Um, so there is more variance here as explained uh, but then the key thing is and this is really there are two parts to, to, to professional betting and trading one's quantifiable uh, long-term positive expectancy that's one two is is diligent stake sizing so expectancy it's 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 really critical to betting so what's the expectancy here multiply them out and it's it's exactly zero so instead of losing 3.3 percent where the expectancy is zero and obviously they've both got the same amount of promotional value in the second and third run you know uh, uh, promotion that, that you're likely taking with these these bets so it's 3.3 percent profit on turnover inferior but this is a this is a liquid bet for example so and let's go to the second example this is an illiquid bet fair market and so you, as i said backing at threes laying at threes it's pretty rare um, more likely you'll be backing at threes maybe laying at 330 340 something like that we're going to use 350 in this example so again i won't i won't walk through each line item but basically if you're backing at three and laying at 350 the expectancy is negative two dollars. So off a base of a ten dollar stake, that's negative twenty percent. So you're giving up a lot. You're donating a lot just because you want to hedge and sort of manage your risk. The Statarb approach here again, it's it's zero. So so it's twenty percent uh, profit on turnover different. So and that's that's extremely significant. So to summarize the maths. Uh, in those two examples, in example one, liquid bet fair market, the match betting approach has a 3.33% lower expected profit on turnover. And in the liquid bet fair example, it's got a 20% lower expected profit on turnover. So it's extremely significant. Um, the only other thing I'd add to that is there's a critical difference between profit on turnover and return on investment. Um, and so whilst the 30% versus the 10% might not sound signi that significant, it's obviously makes sense to most people, but like, yeah, that's quite different. But if you multiply, because there's this power of compounding, after 10 bets, your return on investment, if your POT is 30%, it's gonna be over 1,000%, uh, whereas if you compound 10% over 10, uh, 10 bets, you're winning at 159% uh, return on investment. So there's a huge difference there. So final comments. So I've just walked through those mathematical examples and they should give you some ideas into, or some insight into the expectancy and how, how the hedging costs are significant. And, and over the long run, um, those, those examples where there's the negative 3.33% the and negative 20% in comparison to the statistical arbitrage approach. Maybe you can assume that over the, the average match better is probably about 10 to 15 percent profit on turnover inferior but so there's this there's this cost to expected profit second point there is around variance one of the most common uh justifications for using the the matched betting approach is to manage variance and that's fair enough you know intuitively you're backing it over here you're laying it over there you're just kind of capturing a spread if you like but ultimately through diligent stake sizing you're able to manage your variance and so it's just a, it's just a an, essentially an insurance cost that you shouldn't be paying conflicts so interestingly a lot of these match betting services are actually affiliated with betfair uh, further to that betfair actually has the same parent company as sportsbet so these a lot of these match betting services they're they're kind of in bed with the bookies effectively so they're trying to get punters in there backing and laying in Betfair and, and chopping themselves up by paying these exorbitant uh, insurance costs, which is, is essentially what they are. 
sustainability as well. So be careful with top price finders um, simply because the bookies use them too. So if all you're doing is um, using these top price finders through these match betting services to try and turn over um, bonuses, for example, then the bookies can find you fairly quickly. The final point there is around the funding requirements. Betfair, you do need to have the full amount of the, the potential liability down. So um, it is more expensive from a cost of capital perspective as well. So then I guess the final question is, all right, I get it, match betting versus statistical arbitrage. Uh, I can see the differences there. If I'm interested in the stat arb perspective or approach, then how do you find a good system to follow? Well, obviously, Edge Alerta, we've built up a reputation, a real strong track record of, of having a system that works. Um, there's a, there are a lot of systems out there. Most of them don't work. Most of them, unfortunately, are, are quite um, scammy at best. But So this is the hard part to find a good stat arb system to follow. Um, and that's kind of an open-ended question. I'm not going to tell you to, to use us over others, but feel free to, um, to do the analysis and, um, and have a look around. So that's it for me. If you've got any questions, you can message me on Telegram, you can email us, um, or you can even ask them uh, in the comments section below this video. Thanks, guys.